Hi everyone, welcome to worship. We're going to talk today a little bit about um, Jesus and how sometimes he feels just like he felt just like we did when he was on earth. He felt sad sometimes and happy sometimes and um, he felt loved or felt betrayed and all these different feelings that sometimes we feel also. And um, so I told you yesterday about how he loved um, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, who were his friends, right? And um, they were going to have another big celebration in their town, and they wanted to come, and they wanted Jesus to come to their house for dinner again. And this time Martha knew that she was going to make a big dinner, but Mary was going to help her, and they weren't going to go so extravagant and not worry about that, but worry about just spending time with their friend. And when... Um, when uh, the, all the disciples came and Jesus came and they were sitting in the living room, um, Martha was still you know, busy getting the dinner ready, but Mary noticed something that not many of the other people noticed while they were visiting and getting ready for the big celebration dinner. And um, what Mary noticed was Jesus was sitting down um, in the living room, kind of in the couch, on the couch maybe, or bench or whatever they had back then and he was very quiet and usually Jesus was talking and and um, yeah just just being with people and and with a big smile on his face full of love and joy and sharing that with others but this time he had a look on his face like he was sad like he was like his heart was heavy that he just felt ugh. have you ever felt like that where you just something's bothering you and you just don't feel good about it and you're just kind of sad. And um, Mary noticed that that's what, how Jesus felt. In fact, some people can kind of, a lot of pe um, there are people who can notice other people's feelings, right? Some people don't, they just don't know what's going on and they're, they worry about other things. But there's some people who really have sympathy or empathy for other people and they can tell how they're feeling. Well, Mary could tell how Jesus was not feeling good. So she went back to her room and she got her most prized possession, the thing that was, that not only was worth the most money probably that she owned, but something that she'd been saving and using only a little bit at a time, only for special occasions. But she decided to bring the whole thing out right now. And what it was, it was a big flask, a big, um, yeah, like a jar, like a beautiful jar, nice thing, that was filled with perfume, very expensive perfume. So, um, in fact, they say that the that it probably would have cost somebody working for a, for six months, everything that their whole paycheck would go. It would be six months of their paychecks to go towards this one bottle of perfume, and it was you know a good size bottle, but um, this was I don't know how Mary got it. I don't know if she, it was a gift to her, if she saved up her money to buy it. Um, we don't know how she got it, but somehow she has this very expensive flask of perfume. And she brings it out and she carries it over without saying a word or talking to anyone. And she gets, she gets a basin for Jesus' feet and she puts his feet in there. And she pours the perfume, the entire bottle, six months worth of wages of work in, in to um, this basin on top of Jesus's feet. And um, she slowly pours it so that the perfume, the smell comes out and it fills the whole room. And um, Jesus is just watching and, think, and slowly, instead of feeling heavy and sad, he's starting to smile and be, um, sit up a little straighter, have a little bit, um, look a little lighter with a bit of, little bit more of a smile on his face and she put the perfume all over his feet and then she started wiping, wiping the perfume off his feet with her hair. Now, perfume is strong when you use just a little bit. What if you, pour, what if you poured a big flask of it? all over and and I bet the whole room the whole house I bet they could smell it outside right this perfume and 
Mary, um, all of a sudden, she was, she was, she was happy. She felt like she'd done something. She looked at Jesus's face, and instead of being sad, he was happy and smiling, and she was happy and smiling. And then other people came up because they had obviously smelled the perfume. Came up there and started chastising her. That means saying what she had done was wrong. Why would you do that? Why did you waste that whole bottle of perfume? And the one that was the worst was Judas. Now, Judas Iscariot, he was the one who was the treasurer for the disciples in Jesus. He kind of kept track of the money. People would donate to them because they knew that they helped the poor and um, they, would, they would use the money to give food and clothing or whatever um, the people who didn't have any money needed. He would, they, would, they would supply for the poor with this money. And Judas Iscariot said to them, to, especially to Mary, why did you do that? If you wanted to waste all that perfume, we could have sold that perfume and made tons of money and then we could have given that money to the poor. Now, those are kind of, that's kind of true, right? It's true, it's true if she sold that perfume and she gave that money to the poor. That would be a really kind thing, a very, very kind thing. And, um, but there were two things that um, Judas wasn't that Judas wasn't really saying. One one thing was that Judas kept track of the money, but what he wasn't telling people was that he would steal. He would steal from from their plot of their their um, bag of money when no one was looking at night. You know, when he took the bag of money home, he'd just take out a a few coins or whatever, and and hide it and keep it for himself. So. When he was saying that, that he, um, that she should have sold it for the poor, he was really thinking about himself because that would have been a big chunk of money he could have stolen without anyone knowing. And um, Jesus knew his heart. He knew Judas's heart and he said to him, Judas, um, it's true, we want to give to the poor, but the poor is going to be with you forever. There will always be always be poor people that you need to help and you should help but I'm not going to be here much longer and Mary did something very unselfish for me she did something for me that cheered me up that made me feel lighter that gave me joy and she under she did something that I will always appreciate that I that I will make sure is told for the rest of the ages and isn't that true we know this story because um, it's it was it's in the Bible and um, and I'm telling it to you right because I read it from there so um, Mary did something you know she had a choice to make and and we always have choices to make um, every everything we do what we're gonna wear that day what we're gonna eat and those are little decisions but there's big decisions that we have to make too and it's important that we think about oh, which which one's right right which one should we do but um, I liked how he said, the poor is always going to be here. And it, they are right all through history, all through history. And in the future too, there will always be people who need our help. And we can give in, there are so many ways to give, right? We can give people rides in the cars if, if we know it's safe. Um, we can share our food if we grow food, if we have extra food, if we make extra food, we can share that. Um, we can share our money to, with organizations that help. We read that story about the water princess. There's organizations who help people get clean water and they don't have to walk so far. There's organizations um, that help children um, get, get school supplies and have, and, and have lunch at school and have a breakfast and they wouldn't get those things otherwise. So there's money that we, um, we can use our money for many things to help many people. We can use our time to help people. And, um, but sometimes we can do something that just helps one person, right? That just makes one person feel loved and to lift them up and bring them joy during the day. So um, you get to choose. That's a choice you get to make. Do you, do you feel that you want to help a whole bunch of people with what your resources are or just one person? And it's whatever you choose. It's your choice of how you want to be kind. But, I, but the whole point is you're being kind. So 
um, I am proud of you for all the things you've done already, all the all the love and the joy and the kindness that you've spread around to your family and your friends, and um, I I can't wait to hear what other things you are doing. All right, so have a wonderful day. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the many blessings you have given us. You've given so much to us that we can give back to others. Help us to make good choices of who to help and what to do, but help us to always remember that kindness and love is what we should strive for. Um, we love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, have a good day.